Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all well today. It's not a very nice day out there at all. It's pretty yucky. But it would still be a great day to go to the beach. I have to say, on like a day like this at the beach. So I hope you've all had a lovely weekend. Today we are going to be... Morning, Katrina. Good morning. Glenn's mum is on. Ah! <laughs> He's excited. Um, I hope, oh, and hello to Sophie. Good morning, Sophie. I hope you're well today. It's nice to see you. Right, I hope you're all doing great today. Um, what we're going to do today is inspired by one of another one of our favourite books in this house. It's called Sharing a Shell by our favourite author, Julia Donaldson and Lydia Monks. And it's all about, if you haven't heard the story before, you can always catch it up on YouTube or something later on. It's all about a little snail who has to share where he lives. And there are some really, really beautiful illustrations. So inspired by these pictures of rock pools today, we're going to try and create our own. And we're going to use some of our techniques that we used last week when you did those amazing, amazing beach scenes. Our Katie Morag inspired beach scenes. Good morning, Jamie. How are you today? I can't believe you're soon going to be in Primary 2, Jamie. Harris is going to be in Primary 2 in a few weeks as well. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. Right. So let's quickly go over our resources that you will need for today's art lesson. Now you'll need a sheet of paper. We've gone for A3. You don't have to go as big as this. But sometimes it's easier if Mrs C goes big so you can see it better at home. Um, you also are going to need either crayons or some oil pastels. Okay, it's up to you what you have at home. Crayons will work just as well. It needs to be something waxy, something oily. You'll also need a pencil and some scissors. Okay, that's for step one. You'll also need for step three, some watercolour paints. If you don't have these, maybe some liquid, some watered down normal paint will work as well. Oh, Harris, I would like you to actually go to, see that little clear bowl over there, could you go and put some water in that for me at the sink? Thank you. Also need a little tub of water. And some brushes. You just fill up over there, baby, thank you. And for the last finishing touches, now this doesn't have to happen. This is just if you want something, a little extra thing to do. PVA glue and some sand. Ours is a bit wet and soggy. Well, I took it from the sand pit this morning, so it's a bit wet and soggy because it wasn't quite, well, it was covered, but the water must have come through the cracks. Thank you, darling. Well done. That was a great job. It's got its water. Thank you, Harris. Did you get a little bit on the floor? That's okay. We'll get that later. Right, so paper. Pencil, scissors, oil pastels, watercolour paints, water, brushes, and for the finishing touch, some glue and sand and little pebbles if you have them, just whatever. Right, let's get cracking. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do with your pencil is you are going to try and draw the shape that you would like your rock pool to be. Now, what I want you to avoid is doing something like this. Okay? That just looks like a puddle. It looks like a puddle, but also is there something else wrong with it? It doesn't really look like a rock pill either. No, okay, well I think the shape's okay. And I think the puddle, the fact that it's a puddle, because that's technically what a rock pill is, is okay. But there's something really wrong with that. No rocks. No. Anyone else at home get me? It's the size of it. Look how small it is. Why did I bother with a big massive sheet of beautiful A3 thick card if that's all of it I'm going to use? If I give you a piece of paper in the classroom, boys and girls, use it all up. That's the only bit of paper you're going to get for the whole lesson. So make the most of it. So I'm going to show you on the back what I'd like you to do instead. I'd like you to try and go right to the top and the bottom. Glenn said it's not big enough. Well done, Glenn. It was tiny. What a waste of paper. We're trying to be eco-friendly. So instead, I want you to try and fill the page. If it helps you, try and touch some of the spots on your paper, some of the edges, okay? If that helps you, make it big enough. So something a bit like that. And you'll notice Mrs C when she's drawing, she doesn't just do one solid line. She does lots of little lines until she's happy. Then she goes over it a little bit harder. 
trying to rub out a hard line is very tricky. But if you try and rub out a light line, very, very easy. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Okay, so try and fill your paper like that. So if I show you at home what I mean, meant there, if you try and rub, rub out a light line, a hard line, it's impossible. So I'll rub out my light line. It disappeared really easily. But if I rub out my hard line, ugh, can't get rid of it. And actually, it's still there. And if you actually feel that, I've actually dented the paper. So when you're drawing, it's really important to use light lines at the beginning. And then once you're happy, go over your lines a lot harder. Because you can never rub them out if you make it too hard. You're going to make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Especially at drawing puddle slash rock pool. So just go lightly, then heavy up your lines. So Harris, we're not going to do any detail just now either, okay? I'll tell you why in a minute. Right, so once you've got that shape, that's the outside. That's going to be the edge of your rock pool, where all the rocks are going to be in the sand. So inside that, you're going to follow the shape round once more. Okay, so that's almost like a border. Now, if you did yours too small in the first place, what you can now do is you can actually go around the outside to make it bigger. So it doesn't matter what order you do it in, as long as you've done it. So you could have outside space for all your sand and your stones and your pebbles and your rocks, and the inside's going to be the water where all the creatures live. Okay, so you've got, it's almost like a concentric shape. So think back to when we did our circles weeks and weeks and months and months and months ago when we did the circle, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. You're almost doing that with your rock pool. But it's going to be quite tricky because it's got to be the same shape. Right, we're going to cut out the outside line now. Not the inside line, the outside line now. So we're going to cut that out before we do any painting or drawing. So Harris, I want you to cut that line, so the outside line shape for me. Okay, and you've got your lefty scissors there. The other good tip here, if you've taken it right to the edges, it's really easy to cut out because it's actually just the corners that you're taking off. This is lovely thick cartridge paper to do, which is going to hold our watercolours really well, but it's quite tricky for cutting out. So I might need to give Harris a little help in a second, unless, actually, he's doing a brilliant job. Just think, Harris, at the beginning of primary one, you could hardly cut at all, and now look at you go. I think you're definitely ready for primary two, don't you? Mm -hmm. I think so. And your drawing's getting much better as well. And all other right, so we've got something like this now. Okay. We're going to be doing a fun bit in a second. I'm just going to help Harris if he's going to have a little bit of help. And I'll give you some time to cut that out. extra bits of paper out of the way. You don't need those now. That can get recycled. So next up what we're going to do is we're going to get our oil pastels out or our crayons. And I've also got, I posted this on the page I say, I don't know if you've got a chance to see it or not. This is just like one of those posters that you would maybe get up on your, your school wall if you were doing this for your topic. So it's a seashore and rock pool guide, an illustrated guide to the creatures and plants of the coastal tide zone. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to choose one or two things that we would like to be in our rock pool. And it's up to you how big you make them or how small you like them. They could be further down, which will make them smaller, or they could be up at the top. So now with your oil pastels, you watch it spill that water, you're going to lean on over it. So now with some of the oil pastels, we're just going to press quite heavy with our oil pastel. And we're going to draw some of these things. So what should I draw first, Harris? What are you going to draw first? I'm going to go for a starfish, I think. Now, if you joined in last week, remember the, the fab thing, and you were loving doing this, Harris, with the white. It might not show up in the paper, but when you paint it, it'll look really special. Harris, after the lesson last week, did lots and lots of magical writing, didn't you? Secret messages you were doing. 
So don't be scared of using white here as well. It can look really special. Right, so I'm going to go for straight in with a starfish. So I'm going to keep it quite large. I'm going to draw one leg of my starfish. I'm going to draw another leg of my starfish. I'm going to draw the third leg of my starfish. So you're keeping your drawings quite large. Lots of nice detail and lots and lots of nice colour. Sophie and Jamie, we did this when we did our um, Katie Mirag topic. So you too will be pros at this. I bet you're, I bet you're onto step four already because you know what you're doing. Brilliant, Hannah. Straight colour in your shapes as well. And it could be lots of little stones. You might have lots of little stones in the bottom of your things. If you make a mistake and you're not happy, cover it over with something else. And there'll be lots of seaweed in the bottom of your rock pool, maybe. So I'm going to put some stones to Harris. If you're not happy with that, darling, just cover over with something else. Okay. What else could we put on? What have you got here? A, there's, ooh, a tube worm or a crab. Oh, let's go for some log worms. Harris, you were doing a... Um, Beasties for your topic, lugworms. Have you heard of a lugworm before? Mm -mm. No, no, neither have I. I wonder what colour they are. Do you want a black? Let's just go for a black one. Okay, I'll hold this up again in case you've not had a chance to look at it at home. You could have clams in the bottom, you could have periwinkles, you could have mussels, you could have jellyfish. It'd have to be a very, very big rock pool, of course, if you're going for jellyfish. Just because you've got one starfish doesn't mean that you don't have to have a second one. I'm going to go for one of those ones that are much more wide and of course you could have little tiddlers in the bottom you could have little fish in the bottom of your rock pool as well but just fill it up don't forget the seaweed either seaweed and rocks they'll always be at the bottom you might even want to put some little grains of sand and don't be scared to use more than one oil pastel on your starfish to get us detail and it could be a comical one don't feel you have to do something quite realistic here if you want to have um cartoon faces on some of your creatures you could don't feel this has to be super duper serious today right what else are we going to go for Harris? i've done a long worm i've done some starfish i'm going to do one of those beautiful clam shells so let's just get a big big shape in here and turn your rock pool round as you're um, drawing boys and girls. Don't just have it up the same direction the whole time because creatures can float around in this thing. And you'll always look at things in a different way. So this is my clam shell now. A little line down the middle. I'm um, going to pop some more stones in this, some more rocks. Oh, that was the same colour. I thought it was going to be a different one. Okay. I'm going to try and maybe get some seaweed in this. It's maybe a bit too dark, deep, dark, a bit too bright. There we go. Alright, Anna. What about some seaweed and stones in yours? Is it starting to come together now? It's almost like you're creating like a little pond. I don't know if you've got fish at home, but it's almost just like you're doing like a little aquarium. We used to have fish. What happened to our fish, Harris? Can you remember? Mm. No, I can't remember what happened to our fish. I'll give you a clue. It involved going on holiday and there being a power cut. When we were away. I think actually you might have been too little. It was when we lived in our old house. You probably don't, you won't, yeah, you wouldn't remember it. Yeah, so we did have a beautiful aquarium when we used to live in our old house. But we had a little bit of a disaster. Where we went away on holiday and there was a power cut and when we came back, well, the fish tank hadn't reset it, so let's put it this way. And we never, ever got more after that. Bye. Um, because as per usual, you guys wanted the fish and mummy was the one that ended up cleaning the fish every single week. And I can't 
Plus we were moving house. We ended up moving house. So we had enough going on. Right, let's just pop in. I'm just going to go for a few more grains of sand and a few more stones on mine just to fill in. Try and fill in all those white spaces. Try and have it as interesting as you can. Even if it's just adding more pebbles and more stones into the bottom of your rock pool. Try and just get as much detail in there as possible. You don't have to colour in every shape that you do. But it might be worth it. I'm also going to just draw my outside line. I suppose I better put a little like, fish in this. And little, what fish shall we go for? I haven't done one yet. Let's go for the a dragon neck. Let's go for a dragon neck. So if you look at the shape of that, so draw the shape that you need first of all. And I'm going to draw quite light with my oil pastel until I get that shape right. Okay, so I'm just drawing the shape of its body. And I'm just going to put on its nose. And then its tail. And then I put on all of its fins. So don't try and draw the outside shape first. Try and draw the body of your fish first. And then draw all your little bits and bobs on hand. I should put smiley faces on yours. That looks so cute. Love it. I wish I printed this off in colour. I'm not very sure what the colour of dragon net yeah, is. I'm going for this oakery colour. It didn't print off in colour. And I don't know, there's maybe... I think we need some new coloured ink. I'll speak to Daddy about that later. Okay, it's my dragon net. So Harris has gone for a more he's gone for a more comical one. All his creatures have got smiley faces and they're all happy. I've gone for quite a Harris has seemed boring. Um I've gone for quite a realistic one. Okay, but he's gone for a more comical one. Right, so I think that is more than enough. Now I'm just gonna put a few more rocks there just to a little bit more interest and then we're going to move on to step three now this if you've taken part in these lessons before the next part will not be exciting for you you'll know already so oil pastels and crayons are made of wax and oil wax is made from oil okay oil paints are made from dried oil paint now I don't know if you know much about oil and water. You might have seen some oil slicks maybe on the news or you might have read about them or you might have seen a puddle and a car has just gone over it and a little bit of oil might have dropped out of its exhaust. So you might, might have noticed something that happens with oil but it doesn't mix with water. That's why oil slicks cause real problems to the wildlife because it's really hard to wash them afterwards. So what will happen is you're going to wash some beautiful blue watercolours over the top of this now. And what will happen is the drawing will still come through, it will still show up. So oil pastels are great for that. And Harris last week had great fun with the white because he was writing lots of messages and giving you a bit of paper and then I was having to reveal them with the paint. They like great fun. They were, all, they were all nice messages as well. You're doing such a nice job with this. Right, so if you're ready to move on, Harris, you just take your time because you've got all day after this. Can catch up at any point. The boys and girls at home can pause this if they want to, and you can just catch up. So we're just going to use. We're just going to think about the colours that we would see in a rock pool. So it's up to you. If you're going for a sunny day, you might see that it's quite blue because it's reflecting blue from above. If it's a murky, grey, yucky day, you'll probably find that the reflection in the rock pool is also quite murky and grey. If it was a day like today, for example, the, the water, the reflection on the water would be very dark. So Harris was very kind and went and got mummy some water so what i'm now going to do is i'm just going to add a little bit of water to my colors not too much and i'm just going to sweep some color all over now a good tip is when you are running out of water color on your brush just put your water brush just so your brush back in the water and then keep going with the painting and you end up with this sort of effect okay you want it to be dark in places and light in places. That way it looks a bit more realistic. Also with watercolours, the trick to using watercolours is keep them wet. Watercolours are not like the thick paint that you get in bottles in school. That you do need to add water to sometimes to thin it out a little bit. This stuff you, you need to add water to keep them nice and wet. You don't want to see the brush strokes. You want to keep it nice and soft, nice and smooth, almost quite bloody. Now if I just show you what happens, because I 
went over the top of my white there. See that there? Don't worry if you get any on the edges here because you're actually going to cover that up with sand in a section, second. And don't be scared to go into other colours now, so don't be scared to make some of it darker because it could be deeper. But as soon as you start to see a brush stroke, get more water on your brush. Get your watercolours nice and wet. And don't be scared. Well, it looks super blue now. It really does. It looks like the sea now. Don't be scared to brush right over the top of your drawing. Sometimes I look at boys and girls in the classroom and they're still painting around everything because they're, they don't want to ruin their picture. It is a strange thing to get over. But you won't. It will show up. So keep going over. If you haven't pressed hard enough, you might think that some of your drawings may be disappearing right now. Maybe you haven't pressed hard enough with your crayon or your oil pastel. If that's happening to you, stop straight away and make your drawing darker. Oh, that looks nice. What's that? Purple. That was a different shade of blue. So if you can't see your drawings, that means you probably haven't pressed hard enough with your crayon. So go back over it now. If you can see brush strokes, stop what you're doing, get more water on your brush and continue. Okay, so I'm sweeping off the whole thing. The problem I've now got is this is wet, so if I hold up it's going to dribble everywhere. Um, to show you the end, so I'll maybe move that back a bit, I don't know if you can see it quite well. At home. And I haven't bothered to paint in the outer edges. What happened to that paint? Well, I think just a little bit of the blue seeped into it. It's no big deal. Right, so if I hold this up now, it's probably going to dribble everywhere, but it won't matter because I'm going to stick some other things around the outside. In fact, as it's dribbling, it looks a bit nice. Okay, so this is my finished inside of my pool. Hi, Granny. Granny's watching you. Okay. Right, now what we're going to do is I'm just going to wait for Harris just to finish that painting off. You're probably doing it at home as well. You don't have to paint the outer edges. I'm just getting rid of that. Just a bit of a perfectionist. I'm just getting rid of that dribble that's there annoying me a little bit. I mean if you did want to paint the edges, if you want the edge to be rocks and things, paint it black or paint it grey or paint it brown, whatever you want to do. You, do. you don't have to do that. I'm not doing that. Okay. Right. You just need to dip your brush in there, Alice. If you try and wiggle it, you'll end up tipping over. Okay. Right, next up, what we're going to do while he's just finishing off, he's just finishing painting. Fill up that little bit that's there. You've still got some brush strokes in there. So this is when I'm going to get the PVA glue. I was going to use Pritt stick here and then I suddenly thought, this is wet, that won't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spread the glue with my glue spreader onto the outside circle. Now just do a little bit at a time. Not glue dumper. It's not a glue dumper, it's a glue spreader. That's right, babe. Okay, and you're wanting to make sure that you've got the glue all over that clear section. Now, I would only do a little bit at a time, boys and girls, because the glue will dry quite quickly if it's quite warm today. And you could do the whole thing with glue to get back to the beginning that could have dried, and then you've got to do it all over again. So just do a little bit at a time. Then get some sand. Now, what I would do with the sand is just sprinkle it on, and it should stick. Now, my sand's quite wet. Okay, wiggle, wiggle your sand about a little bit. Some rocks there as well. And maybe even pat it down. Okay, so you see that's starting to come together. It's really nice. You alright with the glue? Just do that's probably enough glue just now, Harris, because it'll start to dry quite quickly. So just do a little, just do a I don't know, maybe like a hand's worth measurement wise and then move on to another bit. Our sand's a bit wet, so it's not sticking very well. Hopefully the whole is a bit drier. Okay. It's starting to come together now. Let me just get some more glue. Oh, yours is looking a bit better. You must have used a bit more glue, I think. My mummy. You got a little rock here yeah, because we've got we've got builder's sand in our sand pit. <laughs> um, left over from when we, we built the house. So, so um, our poor children, they've got um, is it sharp sand? It's called. It's got stones and bits of grit and stuff in it. Not the posh stuff that you get in school. 
Never mind. So there, you'll probably find there is little stones in it, baby. Yeah. Never mind. Fun times. At least you've got a sample. Eh? Yeah, lucky thing. Okay. Isn't it looking amazing? I love it. I might need some more glue soon. So I'm just doing a little section at a time. Oh, I should have said at the beginning, I hope you've got a mat down on your table. I've got sand everywhere. It might be an idea when you're tipping this up to tip it back in the tub. I always forget all these things. Our house is always a bit of a mess. You might have guessed that. I need to remember that some people are a bit more tidy in their houses. Okay, so see how that's starting to come together now? I'm going to go back over this bit. I don't think I put enough glue on that section there. You alright? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I need some rocks. You can have some rocks. Or, some little st or do you mean big rocks? Why don't you draw something? I know. You know. Well, I'll go outside to get some. Alright, okay, well. Don't do that just now. Let me do that once we're finished. Are you going to go and get some gravel from the drive, Jimmy? I'm what just going to go get some rocks. Okay. And I'll be back. Right, okay. This is just going to go outside and get some rocks. But you will be back, apparently. Anything construction y this child likes. Anything that's involved in dirt, mud, cars, diggers, anything like that. Right, so it's really, really starting to come together now. I'm now regretting making mine so big. It will take me forever to finish. But I think we get the idea of it. Okay, what I'll do is I'll finish this off and set a photo of it onto the page later on. So basically, lots of glue around the edges, some sand if you have it. If you don't have sand, don't draw, don't stretch, don't paint it, or you can draw it. Oh, lovely. It's back with his rocks, that was very fast. You'll need a lot of glue for sticking those down, and you'll need to leave it flat until the glue sets. Going on. So when I've done this in the classroom the last time, it was much the sand was much smoother and nicer. But obviously we're not at school just now. I just stole from some from Miss Drysdale. Um, she had some sand in her sandbox. As did Mrs. Kant and Miss Anderson. We're lovely primary one teachers at Dunbarney Primary School. There's not a lot of glue left. No, no, I'll get more. Have you got a sand pit? Have you got a sand pit? It's at school. I know you've got a water tree. Do you have a sand one? Harris, do you have a sand tree at school? Um, uh, Glenn, do you have a sand tree I at school? I don't think anymore, maybe. I don't think anymore. I know you had a water tree, but I don't remember seeing a sand tree. Sorry. I've talked now, which means that actually I might get a chance to finish this. Glenn, I'm going to remember if there's a sand tree or not. I'm just going to chuck some more sand in. We'll just finish it. Because it'll be one of these things. I'll not end up finishing that later for ages. I always come off key sessions and then have to tidy up, I deal with other pretty wrinkles, and then make a cup of tea. Yeah, but I'm going to do that. Time's gone. Okay, I'll get you my glue. Right, I'll just show this to everyone and then we'll say goodbye, okay? Right, so there we go. Rock pool pretty much finished. It's very heavy, it's very wet. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Got sand everywhere. Mr. C's going to go mental when he comes back in the room. Going to have to hoover up. Um, so yeah, think. If you want my advice, wait for the sand to be dry. It sticks a lot easier. And yeah, have fun with it. It's quite a messy one. I need to wash up after this. I'll uh, take some photo of Harris's when he's finished. He's busy sticking some rocks on his. Something very cute. Although I don't think they're going to stick with water. Did you just dip them in the water? Oh, have you put gold down there already? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for joining us. Um, as per usual, please send me your photographs when you're finished. Next week's art session, we are going to be looking closer at creatures that live in the water. So we're going to look at some fish next week. Um, we heads up. It would be brilliant if you had some netting for next week. So the kind of netting that your satsumas or your limes or your lemons come in, keep it for next week. If you don't have it, it's not a disaster. Just maybe have some string instead. But if you have some netting, that would be brilliant. You'll need some cardboard as well. 
and some tin foil. Now mm. the cardboard can mm. be something the cardboard can be something that you can recycle. So it could just be an old seal box or you know packaging. It doesn't have to be a nice piece of white A3 card or anything like that. Because you're gonna cover it up with the tin foil. And that is us. I'm away to go and uh, clean up the mess in here and um, yeah, go and get a cup of tea. So thank you for joining us. If there's anything you would like to do for another art lesson in a few weeks, please, please, please get in touch because there's not very many left and we will see you all very soon. Thank you for joining us. I'll go and post this live now, live now, live onto Facebook and onto YouTube and um, we'll catch you on the other side. I look forward to seeing your end results. Bye bye everyone.